and Huff is just going to dive straight off the cliff and hope for the best. All right, let's get our music running. Uh, I need to find a button. Find a button. Volume mixer. And shout it. No more. Because I'm probably safe up here, right? You're safe you're up safe until you're not. Mojo has the right answer. Safe until you're not. All right. Mm, that one. Mm, yeah, so we should move rooms. And Mojo. Oh, Friday. Whatever. Facts. Facts. Friday. Facts. 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 I remember those. <coughs> you do? Good. So. I. Make noises. Have read part of this. Yeah, I read part. Well, most of it. Um. So. They normally have a single looping main sound. Uh. And. That was pretty much it. And yes. they one of the abilities synchronized sounds machine to its animation was very high on the request of audio features by Domino and Ian. And who's the new one? Domino's the new guy who did artillery sound. And then Ian's the newer guy. Oh <laughs> I was gonna say, well technically new, but also not really. Ian, Ian. Ian is the new guy who did the artillery sound, and Domino is... Uh, Dom Dominant? Dominant. Dominant is the even newer sound. Mr. Fox, welcome back for 33 months. Change category, yeah, I'm going to. Mm. Uh... 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 Ah, uh, caps lock. Ah, cruise control. Yes, cruise control. Yes. I was probably being typed at some stage. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stop and do the Friday facts. It's 11 o'clock, so I'm probably not going to get back to Enshrouded today. Um, that's just how it is, because I've got to uh, get the Friday facts rendered, plus Dyson Sphere video. Also, trying to work, work on working on resource Soviet Republic. I think my answer for Soviet Republic is... Hell no. Oh, I wanted to do realistic mode. Oh, that's even worse. But I think... I... I think the answer is I need to do rubleistic mode. So, I do realistic mode, but then I have the option to spend rubles to speed things up. Um, uh, yeah. Or get out of issues. I don't think so much get out of issues, but I've tried, I, I've got, I've got a save. I built a town. That's not an issue. It's been up and running three, four, five times with five different towns, but it's the five years it takes to get the construction done. Yes. And that's three plus hours. Oh, no, no, no. This is after, after I've spent the time to set everything up. This is like, everything is built. It's just construction crews getting to work. It is five years. And most of it's the limitation of worker numbers. Because yeah. you have a limitation of foreign workers to like 120-ish per day. Um, and it's just so many, so many, even with construction cranes and everything else, there's just so many jobs and so limited labor that everything takes forever. Um, so. I still don't understand the early game because it sort of wants you to build all of the uh, infrastructure from the get-go. Uh, there is not a lot of skipping on early infrastructure you can do. Um, you could technically yeah, sort of skip sewerage, technically, and do it with trucks to and from the border. Um, Your Discord icons are still showing. Yeah, and then extra large now. For reasons. Um, reasons of visibility? Probably. Um, yeah, I'm not on the Friday Facts seen yet um but i have considered using this scene before without the follow-up account with the out the be right back because it ha would then have both our thingies but i'm like no no if you've seen one friday facts video you probably worked out who mojo is because the only other voice in there um except when it's not uh, yeah yeah on those rare times it's not occasionally but then it's like me and somebody else so obviously the somebody else is yeah okay yeah point made it's not you yeah yeah um voice of reason 
Not always. <laughs> well, last week it was the, the voice that understood what was going on. I don't remember what was in last week's Friday Facts. I've actually forgotten as well. <laughs> <laughs> trains! Trains! Um, train. More inter generic interrupts for trains. Yeah, it was the other interrupts. The interrupts, the interrupts, the interrupts, the interrupts. Um, yeah. Yeah, because they're trying to automate the game. Mm, even more so than it already is. Uh, no, I think they're making it more complicated. Um, but yeah, you know, workers and resources, I've... There are some things you can skip, but there is so much you can't skip. Uh, you have to have food, you have to have power, you have to have employment, right? You have to have, you have to have, you have to have before you can get people in. And once you have people in, then you have a workforce to actually start getting stuff built. But then within five years, that's the other thing. Within five years, the vehicles that you bought at the start of the game now start needing maintenance because they're starting to fall apart. So you need to repair them, which then means that you need to have a repair shop up and running for your whole fleet of vehicles that you've already bought that are all basically defunct and will break down all the time. If I'm at memory serves me, you can't import power not easily too. Oh, you can import power super easily. It just comes from border connection. You just say import. The, the power is the easy part. Right. Yeah, but it's the um, the cost from memory. No, power's pretty cheap. Oh, okay. It's actually pretty cheap. Because I remember everyone would always build a coal power plant. Uh, power's pretty cheap, and the reason you build a coal power plant in theory is to do exports. Because you can just fire extra power right across the border, and it doesn't require a truck in the customs house. And the biggest problem with the customs house is, even though there's ports for like two or three trucks at once, only one vehicle can move through the building at one time. Okay, so it's been drawn for three, but only functionally works. as They couldn't figure out how to make it work for more than one. Um, oh, there are mods that somewhat fix it, I believe. I've been told, but um, yeah, functionally only one moves in or out at a time. In those three separate roads and three spots for vehicles and so on and so forth. All right. And I'm not sure if it's a game limitation or it's a incentive to stop using trucks to go to and from the border and swap across to trains because they just move a whole lot more. And the fact Probably that you, is that way. The fact that you can have like you, there, are, there, are, there are some of the customs houses have three train hookups, and you even if you can only have one train physically moving in and out at a time, it doesn't matter because the other trains can still be being loaded and unloaded at the same time as one's physically moving in and out. Uh, so limitations on the vehicles driving, not the limitation on how many can be loaded or unloaded at once. But also means that first time when I buy uh, four times seven. Plus that, plus that. Um, 50 vehicles, roughly. I buy 50 vehicles. And then for three months, the custom house is just full, which is vehicles leaving. Because they're just all stacked up. Only one can leave at one time. So one leaves, and the next one leaves, and the next one leaves. And they just keep spawning in right where the last one was. And then one drives out, and one drives out. It's just, yeah. Yeah. So I think the only way I can do it is... Being, having the option to spend rubles at the first well having the option to spend rubles open and it's almost like um, it's a Soviet Republic or something yeah it is it is it is and the funny thing is uh, I, I think buying stuff with rubles makes the game harder because the cost is roughly twice the cost mm. of spending rubles compared to just doing it the hard way which takes longer but it's miles cheaper. And money is a bigger issue than anything else. Anyway, uh, so sound. Uh, so previously, one sound to a single loop entity. Uh, also, they had a sound limitation. They could only play so many sounds at once, which they cover further down. Uh, yes. So Foundry gets its own sound, which I've heard. Uh, I haven't heard clank, clank. this one. Was the speeding up? The slowing down sounds all right. The slowing down sounds fine. It definitely sounds like it's, it's struggling. Yeah. I was worried about pitches. The pitch change. 
So that's the change they made, is instead of just doing a simple pitch change, they're actually speeding up going through the queue. Plus a little bit of it. I think there's a little bit of a sneaky pitch change in there, but it's not I really think as too. strong. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's a stack inserter. That's a bulk inserter. Which so is? The, the one on the left is has the white inserter, and the one on the right has a green inserter. In the faster and slower video. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a um, the slower one ha also has a regular inserter. It's a stack inserter. Yeah, stack stack inserter. Inserter, not a stack bulk inserter. inserter. Not a back, 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 not, not, not a pallet inserter. It's a stack inserter. The one left is a, a pallet inserter. inserter. And then a stacking inserter. And yeah. then it has a crap inserter and a shoveling inserter. Inster What's the second image? Because it's an inserter now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I missed the one at the bottom. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, multiple main working sounds, uh, the car, I want to hear the second half of this. So you don't hear in the tank the changes between the concrete and the... Yeah, you don't hear the changes in the surface nearly as much in the tank as you do with the vehicle uh, with the car. I do like how it's still flatten the tree along the way. Hey, of course. But the, yeah, the car you can definitely hear the difference in the terrain. Yeah. The only thing with the car is, as it's taking off, you don't really hear the pitch changes it speeds up. It just sort of stays flat. Well, they say they have uh, one main sound which plays faster as the car goes faster. I don't really hear it. Uh, oh, no, they have the idling sound and the driving sound. They tune down yeah, one and tune up the other. Yeah, and they switch between the two. But it doesn't really kick in for the most part. It, it only really... You only really hear the faster sound uh, as it really gets going. Probably requires the speed boost from concrete. Because a car gets the speed boost from concrete, doesn't it? I'm sure sure it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, trains. Trains sound like trains. And then when trains are going through... Oh, when they're going over the bridges, they have a distinctive sound. They sound like roller coasters. Yes. I have no idea what elevated trains actually sound like, because I don't have any around here, really. <laughs> Loud. Yeah, apart from loud, I'm talking about the distinctiveness of the noise, not 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 the volume. Uh, and mining machines. I have one in my apartment. Did they get the sound right? See, the problem is they're doing this with three of them, which means all the sounds are overlapping. Oh yeah, so you can't really pick up on the on the, uh, the dis distinctive sounds. Yeah, so there's definitely a sound for the gears moving to move the whole head for forward and backward, and then there's just this constant, constant sound of grinding. Pretty spot on. Good to hear. Um, yeah, I don't have elevated trains nowhere near us. Um, and ambient sounds. Uh, it was what was it? They come. Uh, we could add invisible creatures. Small, yeah, non-hostile alien birds in the trees. Does that mean that will the trees still be chirping um, when they die? I really hope, rather than adding small invisible creatures to the trees, I really hope they've added it to a tree entity. Mm. So you can chop it, chop it down. So you could chop it down. Or you could leave one tree. You could do the exact opposite. You could leave one tree. 
but it also means that you're not going to end up with some patch at some time that's going to break some type of code or some bit of code where the small, invisible, non-hostile birds can suddenly leave the forest. I'm still curious to see if the sound exists um, when it's polluted or if they've changed the um, the bubbling to some oh. kind of um, glooping sound. Oh, thicken up, the, thicken up the, 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 the fluid. It's a level crossing near my street. It's an elevated portion over the creek uh, about half, half a kilometre away. Um, well, we only have a couple of elevated bridges over, over roads. Um, You're in Flatsville. Yeah, to a certain extent. That and it's it's just cheaper to put the road over a bridge than vice versa. Oh, that too. Like there is one that literally does a does a ninety degree turn to then get elevated to then do a hundred and eighty degree turn to come straight back down to do another ninety degree turn. So it's literally a horseshoe on the road. That just sticks out one direction to go over the train tracks. Yeah, in general, that's what they do here. Because the size of the train is generally predictable as well. Uh, are they going to do early access for the 2.0? No idea. No. So far, no. I wish I did anything about it. What, what, what? In English? They haven't said anything about it. Mm -hmm. Why I does the don't Blind and Copper so. swap lanes? to be special just 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 to be cool That's because different. somebody built the smells and somebody else built the base that's generally how it happens <laughs> this that's classic multiplayer uh, that is uh so Kovrex told me when specific inventory sounds the game oh this one i didn't listen to yeah this one i don't know how i feel about this one i think it's one of those things which i'm just too accustomed to Volume doesn't get louder. I want the volume louder. I don't know. See what I mean? I don't know. Like they've, if they've given every, not everything, a lot of, a lot of individual items and individual sound, I don't know if that adds to the game. That's what it really comes yeah, down it to. Doesn't, doesn't really. Wow, I'm yawning. Um, doesn't really add much. Like belt sounds like a piece of cloth, which, maybe. Inserters sound really electronic. I think I'm going to boost the audio on that, that section. What's the red thing in the middle of the screen beside the subsection? The, the person. Is it the player or the laser turret? It's the player facing north. Hmm. There's also an inserter there that's just hanging in the middle of nowhere for no reason it's a special one it probably goes back to the whole lane switching thing it probably goes back to yeah somebody did something uh advanced convoying patrol parameters oh yeah attenuation with distance can be changed from the default linear to a more natural sounding exponential curve also option of log logarithmic uh, cosine or S curve or no attenuation at all. If you want to do something different, we can change how the sound attenuates from the zoom level in a similar way. It's possible to specify darkness threshold or uh, order to have certain sounds play only at night time. Last tool in this toolbox are dynamic sound modifiers. It's allowed to change the level of a sound just for a specific game context. There can be dynamic volume modifiers that are applied only when the menu simulation or when tips and tricks or when driving a vehicle when a train is on elevated rails. That's nice. That's nice. But...
Put them again in advanced volume control properties. So is that something that the user can access or not? I don't know. It just seems like a lot of options for the sake of options. Okay. Uh, a lot of sounds. Sound aggression is one way to deal with it. Well, sound we've been played many times. Instance, uh, like sort of certain limit that could have culled or have the volume reduced. This system is already in 1.1. It broke it in 1.1. It's been multiple times I've had multiple artillery that you have no audio for because they've hit the, they hit the limit. Mm. Uh, sound priority. Enough resources left for more important sounds. For example, GUI effects for certain player actions. Priority system for sounds. Uh, building were given a higher priority and several butter sounds were deprioritized. Uh, with that test here, building audio test suite, starting with creating a simple framework to be able to test at least basic audio features like checking sound is playing when it's supposed to, the suite grow over time, covering existing features and fixes for various bugs, was covering any brand new features and fixes for brand new bugs. Yep. New music. Um, oh, yeah, that's probably the most interesting thing. Well, it's another thing to wait for. Uh, Factorio, uh, Steam soundtrack. You can buy the soundtrack on Steam, can't you? Yeah, you can. Yes, yes, you can. And that music has um, been there since like 2014 or 2015. <laughs> well, as in, it's been in the game. That's on who Steam. It, is. it was on Steam. Daniel James Taylor. Uh, search. And... To 2016. I thought it was part of 2015... Uh, version 15 or 4... Not 15... Um, 11 or 10. I don't remember I when it was in the game. Don't know, but it was published in... 2016. Oh! There is a mod to put okay. the old game music back in. Really? How old the music? Oh, it's from like version six and older. It, I, I don't even remember when it was added to the game. It's really don't remember. It's kind of interesting, but it's really low quality and it looped really often. It's like forty seconds long, and it just loops over and over. SoundCloud. Nothing to see here. Well, that's helpful. Well, his own website doesn't work. That sort of implies he's not doing music anymore. Uh, yeah. Okay, try that web page. February 2016. And that has... Uh... 20... Six tracks. That's twenty six tracks. Lord Ambience five and six? What's Lord Ambience five? Can I listen to Lord Ambience five? I can. On Amazon Music. Okay. Just what you always Okay, uh, Daniel James Music. Oh, Last.fm. Yep. Yep. Oh, Joomla. <laughs> yep. It's probably been hacked. Yep. Um, uh, it's not alpha players being present at screenshots, generally the players that are present. Sometimes they edit them out by not having a player or shrinking the player or doing it in fly mode doing it in editor mode with the editor GUI turned off um so yeah he's left 
So he's not doing the soundtrack anymore. So it's going to be a new composer for the soundtrack. Okay. And for some reason, my browser is slow as shit. Chrome's doing something bad. Do we have... Uh, end process. End process. Search by memory. Oh, YouTube Studio. One gigabyte worth of RAM. Thanks, Chrome. Um... Okay. That's a bit better. Okay. Uh, reset that to the re reset to the start. <coughs> All right. Uh. Oh, the, the, the fact that soundtrack is in the game files anyway. Uh, what, what, what? Version twelve. Yeah, version twelve is the earliest it's in. As in the current one. Yeah, the current set was added to version 12. I thought it was in 11. What 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 version, what year did 12 come out? Um, well, technically December 2015. And the soundtrack got published in 2016. So it sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, I wonder so what the next big overhaul mod will be. Probably none. It seems like a lot of the mod devs are just going, no, nope, not touching it. I'm not doing anything major. We're going to wait for the DLC because it's going to break everything. Um, in saying that, the um, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, factory soundtrack is a game files anyway. Is it? Is it exposed? Actually, I think it is exposed. Yeah, they're all there. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some. Um, there's some. A few that aren't normally available. Also, the um, demo sound track is um, in the the music pack the demo soundtrack I mean demo soundtrack from the trailer oh is in the uh, game files no that one's not in the game files okay so in the steam there is the one for the trailer yes right. um when you buy the soundtrack through steam um, I, yes. yeah, I have... You have to get it through the soundtrack. Uh, th through the separate soundtrack. Or rip it out of the YouTube video. That too. <laughs> um, yes. I have, so I have a copy of all the... I, okay, I add music for a lot of games in post. Um, that way if you do cuts in the video file, it doesn't cut the music. Um, because trying to... Trying to line up the music. Video video you can speed up quite easily and people won't notice. Right? 130 to 150% of normal speed. Quite easy. So it's like 75 FPS for a 60 FPS recording. 75 is 150. No, 125. Yeah, 75 FPS is fine. Most people won't realize. Um, you can even go to 150% depending on how you do it and how often you do it. Um, People won't notice, but with music, you'll notice. Um, and there are certain soundtracks that are notorious for it. Uh, Factorio, not so much. Capital Ministry, super, super notorious. Dyson Sphere, the same. Because uh, Twitch will do the whole, you're falling behind. We're going to give your playback to you at 55 FPS because we're having issues or you're having issues or whatever it happens to be. And then you'll play catch up at like 63 FPS when watching a stream. And the music plays faster and it sounds off because music is really obvious when it sounds off. So I always add the music in post. Mm. Uh, I haven't posted the soundtrack. I just went looking through the game files and found the music I want. Oh, uh, that's how they deal with drop frames. Uh, yes, yes, that is how they deal with drop frames. And catching you back up to life. Uh, depends on the browser. Uh, I think it was a Twitch thing, not a browser thing. Because some I found, some browsers do it, some don't. I found. 
Uh, I think it also depends on how 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 close to current you are. That too. Yes. There are definitely times where it's just like, no, nope, too bad. You've fallen far too far behind, and we're just going to stop sending you data, and you have to hit F five, or. It's just going to cash, it's going to lag, and then you're going to get caught straight back up to life. Um, I remember, too, because like I've had it where it's just up and down, up and down, up and down. But at other to. times, it just stays uh, behind. Um, I, Kaz, if he's still here, probably not. Um, he was here earlier. Regularly, when I watch his streams, I end up 20 seconds behind at all times. And there's nothing I can do about it. Um, it's really strange how that works. I'm assuming it's just the the particular spot he's ingressing into Twitch, and Twitch's inability to bother sending me data at a correct rate. Um, and it has to be his ingress server, because I can watch other people without the same issue. Um, yeah, networking is complicated and funny, and yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, data delivery. Yeah. Uh, so I regularly download soundtracks. And sometimes I'm going to buy them because they're not exposed in the game f game files. Uh, I'm behind you right now. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah, I either have spooky. to... Yeah, they're definitely spooky because um, I, I face a wall. I have no idea what's behind me. Um, in that saying that, <laughs> I'm in a soundproof room with open back headphones that I can hear when somebody enters on the other side of the room. Um there are reasons why you shouldn't grease um, door hinges. Um, <laughs> <coughs> um, but yeah, I... I, I, I so you know a sassy beating's coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, 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 or somebody's come down harass me about something, and I have like a two-minute time, if I'm lucky, to try and find a spot where I can put a cut in the video. Um, like by going to a menu or something and pausing the recording and then returning it. Um, uh, Jay is behaving like Paul Atreides. Give me his back to the door. Correct. Um, but yeah, I, I regularly go looking for the soundtracks and I'll go looking for the soundtracks in the game files first, then YouTube second, and then if I have to, uh, Steam third. And there's been a couple I've had to purchase or reached out to the devs and said, hey, can I get a copy of the soundtrack? I don't care if you just give me access to the files once. I'm good with that. If you want to do that, if you want to give me a Steam key to get it through Steam, that works too. Because um, that way I can just add the music in post. Dyson Sphere is added in post. Captain Ministry is added in post. Uh, Timber Bourne was added. Timber Bourne was not added in post. No. And cause... you don't get copyright struck by them? Why? Uh, the Factorio one tends to, or at least it used to. Factorio does on YouTube something chronic, on uh, YouTube, Facebook, something chronic, and Dyson Sphere, somebody has a track that sounds awfully like, like the eighth track from Dyson Sphere. The intro is very similar between the two of them, and I have had the second channel, primary channel had one copyright strike, but the second channel has had six of them. I think where video after video after video gets flagged for you've got copyright against our music, blah, 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 blah. Cause this guy's never bothered putting his music on content ID. So he's finally done it after five years or something. So they're finally going through the back, the, the, the back end of the system and catching up. So I have video after video after it's annoying. I've actually got to fill out two more of, uh, two more. I put in a claim. They said it's not valid. So I need to do the, uh, the appeals. That's it. I'm going to do two more of those today. Yes, because that's the, the ideal system is that they Hello, it gets automatically flagged and then you Stay tell them why listen. it's actually not. Yeah. That's definitely. Oh, no. And, definitely and, and, and then they can to, choose to, to say no. It. They can choose to say no, it's, it is our music. Bad luck. And then I need to appeal that decision to them again. Yeah, to them again, not to a third party, yeah. independent authority. Two Pi, how you doing? How you doing? I, I understand why YouTube's not dealing with themselves, because there would just be so many claims coming through all the time. Um, oh yeah, um, but and and there is a not small number that do abuse it, like they just put through fake claims. Uh, well, the reason this guy Black finally Pi. Jack, how you doing, Jack? Think of the raid. 
We're doing Friday Facts. How you doing? What were you playing? Dyson Sphere again, right? Uh, let me do a shout out. Uh, boom. Um, the guy hadn't bothered putting... Are you doing Factorio this time? Uh, welcome. We're about to cover the Friday Facts with my good friend Mojo. Um, Space Station. Little one is getting, yeah. Uh, my friend. Hello, Factoria. Also, jump in mid conversation. Listen. I was flagged by Twitch for using copyright music, even though music said it was free use. Ah, do you have that in writing, Two Pi? How you doing, Kid Cam? Thank you for the follow. Yeah, that's another thing, too, is a lot of people say, oh, yeah, this is free to use, and it actually isn't. Yeah, you got to have that in writing, and you got to confirm it's the original author. Uh, and the best part is there is like three or four websites you can use to look up a piece of music and find out who the actual owner is. But the only way to access these website sites is to pay for a license to use. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, writing it just says so in the description. Chances are, and this is this is why this guy finally copy, uh, finally content ID lists his music, is because he had had multiple people from his Patreon or whatever contact him saying, hey, I'm getting a content ID strike for your music that you've said it's free to use. And it's okay, especially for Patreon members to use it, blah, 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 blah. And what happened is somebody else took his free music and they listed on content ID to get all oh, yeah. the advertising money on YouTube and all the, the blah, 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 when they never had a license to, to the music. They didn't own the music to start with. So they took free music and they listed on content ID on YouTube to flag however many videos. And so another thing that... <laughs> Not insignificant thing that ha also happens. Yeah, yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah, um, and, and a lot of people do that. A lot of people do it, and the reason they do it is it costs like five bucks or something. Yeah, it costs I, them Open nothing. account with, I, I think CD Baby is the cheapest one. With five bucks to open an account and say, all this music is mine, please content ID match it for me. And then you handle CD Baby, you handle all that end, and they take, CD Baby takes like 10 or 20% of whatever it is. But it costs them nothing but a couple of hours to upload all the music and set up a, an account. And then once you've gone through the process once, you get a couple of payouts until somebody goes, hey, this is not my music. And they contact CD Baby and CD Baby finally replies and goes, oh, terribly sorry. We didn't know it, was, it, it wasn't this person's music. Not a problem. We'll delist it. We'll remove it from content ID, blah, 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 blah. And we'll yell at the person who we've been paying for a couple of months who suddenly stops getting payouts, so they make a new account with a new batch of music. And rinse and repeat. Um, yes. And I've just realized the RGB in my computer is broken. That explains why the computer's so slow. I need to restart today. Okay! What, uh, are you actually using RGB controllers? I am using RGB controllers hooked up to the microphone. So the RAM and the fans are changed to different. You know how you have the visual visualizations from the nineties, eighties, yeah yeah yeah, 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 with the yeah. waveforms. It's it's that for the microphone. So if it's bouncing up and down, the microphone's are not muted. See, I can see it's a functional blue light because that's the only color one something there can do, and everything else is just cycling because it's not set up. Uh, everything is doing. Care. The the, the, the the RAM and the fans and all, they, they all do just the red if the microphone's active. Apart from that, they do nothing. The keyboard... Funny, actually. The um, the different parts in my PC, you can see the progression of RGB over the years. It's like the um, the graphics card. Yeah, it has just the tiniest little RGB and then the RAM has more and then, yeah. <laughs> see, I have uh, the RAM, the fans... And technically, the pump on the heat sink for the CPU has a Cooler Master ring on it. That's it. Mm. See, the plug for the RGB on mine isn't even plugged in. Um, Because it requires plugging in USB. And I was like, yeah, screw that. Yeah, fuck that. Um, unless it's got a spare header on the motherboard, it plugs in the motherboard header, and you, you're not doing anything with that header. Um, um, my motherboard predates RGB headers. <coughs> You know, but you said you need a USB. So if it's using a USB header and it's an internal header, and you're not oh, using the a, internal it's header. it's a micro socket on the pump, on, or on the CPU block. 
Oh, to do the RGB for the CPU the block. RGB control, oh. yeah. Otherwise, it just shows a white Corsair logo. Okay. Okay. Which the micro then goes to an internal header and external USB too. Um, no, I mean, so you got to plug. So the pump comes with a USB A to micro cable, and you got to like run it outside or something. Oh, okay. So if it was that, even worse. to an internal header, and you've got a spare internal header that's doing nothing, sure, if sure. Yeah, head, head it to a, um, a back panel, and then just pull the back panel off. That's how I got the USB-C on the front working, because it, because I don't have one of those either. Head up to a back panel. Yeah. yeah I, I don't remember what it was exactly. I had to do something. Yeah, because the front panel header has a USB A socket on the back of it like it doesn't go to one of those big it doesn't know, go to a circuit board meter hint. it doesn't go to a two two millimeter p uh, pitch header like usb usually does okay usb3 normally does and so i needed to go from one thing to a socket and then plug the plug in because okay. it yeah the a is um it just goes to um a usb a type socket on the other end Okay. Uh, Mio has ripped out the front USB of PC panels to put in my PC to get USB ports inside my PC. Jack, you can buy. They used to, in the day, in the day. Okay, you USB became super popular, and you'd have like four ports on maybe on a PC, more likely two, and there'd be two headers inside the motherboard that would give you another four ports, and you would have a cut, a, a expansion slot, we'll call it, that just had four headers on it. Yeah, four USBs. Yeah, four, two or four. Two or four, and they just have cables that came in that just plugged in the motherboard. It was an old case, so I just pulled them out to save money. But you probably buy them on eBay for less than five bucks, including delivery. I have thrown out like 30 of them in the last year. I think I've held on to two. I'm like, if if it ever comes the day I need a USB, I'm going to hold on this. I didn't keep the, the back plate, plate. I just threw that out because I'm like, there is no way I'm going to need it on the external case, he says, after buying a hub because he ran out of USBs. But I need powered USBs outside. So, yes. Um, actually, one thing I didn't have in my collection of crap was a... So the USB headers are normally two ports and I didn't have a USB external port and an internal port as the same cable to give you one inside the case and one outside the case. Uh, maybe you should talk, need to talk a bit Mojo about USB hubs. Mojo, what have you done? Um, what did I do? I don't know, are you daisy tuning USBs? Oh, yeah, there was that one time at work where I had... Uh, well, it wasn't actually me. This we, we, was we, the we, thing we that I... This, yeah. this is the thing that I helped get rid of. Um, I saw photos. This it, was a USB and a USB on a USB. Rate my rig. Yeah, I remember a photo now. Um, yeah, it was um, 20 USB leads and then three or four USB hubs yeah. all chained together to, yeah. to make it all work. Yeah. And uh, then I killed the whole thing by plugging in a USB Ethernet adapter. Oh my god. But yeah, that was their right this that was their solution when I started. Yeah. Just need a single internal USB for the OS on my server. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Uh yeah, no, I end up who was it? Somebody recommended Linsys? Not Linksys. Lin Lin Linsys, I wanna say. Um and I bought a powered hub. And so far, it's been fine. It's running two stream decks, a camera. Uh, I think it's running power to a phone charger. No, that's separate. Uh, Is it those um, power delivery hubs. Mm -hmm. It's a like powered a sixty or one hundred and twenty watt thing. No, 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 no. It's not USB USB C powered powered to charge other things. Um, but it does have. It's probably got that much wattage because. Every single one of them can have power delivered on it, like USB two point, yeah, USB two power, so twenty or watts or USB whatever it is. Three power. 
but not USB-C PD. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, because those are a pain in the ass. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm running three or four external hard drives, the two stream decks. Although that is changing. And something else. And uh, 10 port USB 3. Well, this is technically USB 3, but I'm mainly using USB 2 devices. Um, but it means I got the, the bandwidth coming back to the PC. I have a USB hub for the internal header on my PC in order to have three USB items inside my case. Well, I have one header on my board as three internal headers plus a two header. Yeah, I... I haven't had the need. I haven't had the need, and... I think the only time I would have the need is if I actually bothered with RGB, and I, frankly, I just can't be bothered. RGB and fan headers. Uh, fan... The more modern fans have USB. Uh... Uh, came in the old case of mine from back in the day. Uh, I found... It's here somewhere. No, fan, 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 fan. Fan control. Where the hell are you? Fan control. It does all the fans. and does a pretty good job. Oh, we're at 93%. Nice. I still can't hear it. Um, yep, yeah, that controls the fans of the PC. Um, that and I water cooled everything, including the graphics card, which is why mine has no RGB. Helps get rid of it. Yep, yep. It's also a forty ninety that only takes up one slot. It's amazing. A one a one I mean, slot forty ninety. As to why you would buy a forty ninety, but okay. Uh the VRAM. Oh yeah, that's right. The VRAM, hundred percent the VRAM. Uh, um, but one thing I'm kind of screwed on now. Is uh, only having eight gig. Um, it's um, not the end of the world. Um, sixteen out of twenty-four gig used right now. Like the game's technically running in the background. Photoshop still open. Video editing software still open. Yep. Oh yeah, you got all that crap open though. I do. I do. I do. Uh, hey, hey, Mikkel, it's fine. I have an ad break in six minutes. I'm trying to decide whether we run it now or avoid it. Uh, I wish I could water cool. Uh, uh, I mean, I'd like to get the FFF done. Uh, I wish I could roll a cool one. Maroon temp during winter would cause water in the PC. And some of the water would be too warm. Yeah, I doubt it. Unless your room's going sub-zero. Uh, yes. I could be running all triple SI 2080 TIs. Yeah, that's, 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 that's pointless. Um, but yeah, mine is, I, I don't close things, which is bad, whatever, but also means that whilst I'm rendering the video, I can boot the game up, I can make sure I've got the screenshot and do the thumbnail whilst the render's running. Um, so I don't also, have... So unless rims. you're really, 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 really keen for it, just don't, don't go for water cooling beyond a uh, sealed cooler. Yeah, no, I, AI does wonders. The, the only reason, the 4090... You know, if you're going to do a graphics card, I'd say go go open loop, go custom loop. Custom loop is a money pit. It is a money pit, but like my 4090 water block, it's 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 built into the card. I can't move it to another card. The rad's built for the card. I can't move it. Mm. That would be my only counterclaim. Lost and found. I love my open loops. I'd love to do an open loop. I just also don't want to maintain it. That's also the problem. Um, having said that, as a PC enthusiast, you do need to do it at least once for the experience. But be aware, I, I, it is. I have it done is. it. I have done proper open loop water cooling with a car radiator. Okay, I went old school. There you go. Old school. Okay, car radiator, passively cooled, side of the case. That was a full car radiator, not a tiny car. It was a. It was a from a Ford Falcon. It was from a full size sedan. <clears throat> the case was three foot by three foot by one foot. Um, and it was doing two motherboards, <laughs> but it was also designed to run in 42 degree, 44 degree, 45 degree ambient and passively cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's, oh, who did it? There was a, um, a passive radiator that, um, someone made possibly Zalman. Zalman did one. And it was like nearly a meter tall. 
Yeah, uh... The tower of <laughs> black aluminium. Um, so Linus Tech Tips. Uh, within the last month, did water cooling on... Maybe the latest AMD CPUs? Oh yeah, they popped out one of the really ancient coolers. Yeah, it was the, it was the Zalman cooler, the one you're talking about. Was it the passive one? Yeah, it's a oh, giant one. passive metal box. Oh no, I'm thinking this was a freestanding tower, the one I'm thinking of. Just who sends to the video about an external one? They were both external. Alpha Cool did a, a tower cooler. Uh, I had the mini tower. It was like ten or twenty years ago. When you say tower cooler, you mean like the evaporative tower tower cooler? Uh, uh, Linus, uh, Linus had his home server water cooled through his bloody pool. Hey, look, that... He did, yes. Honestly, Mythgard, that's a great idea. Okay? It's kind well, of funny, though. Reser it doesn't Reser insulate, Ada insulate the... Uh, Salmon? Yeah, it sounds about right. The transfer in, water. Well, it was... In theory, it's deep enough underground, it shouldn't matter. No, so he has a loop that goes from the PCs to an exchange, which exchanges with the water that goes around the pool, and it's all open to the air, so it means that the, it's just heating the air. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's removing the air from... Like, yeah, it's still uh, removing yeah, the heat, there, but yeah. there is an inefficiency in the system there. Yeah. The, the biggest issue was he was planning to use one loop to go from PC yeah, to the, pool and back, rather than having to pool and back. heat exchanger in the middle. To work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, having a heat exchange in the middle with the outside water stays outside and the inside water stays inside, that would have been the way to do it. Uh, external they small tower, it. liquid ran through. Uh, yeah, that would have been Alpha Cool, yeah. Alpha Cool did the tower cooler. Um, I know, the one I the one I always wanted to set up but I never did, because money, uh, was I wanted to do the tower cooler with the shower head and the evaporation cooler. I wanted to do one of those. The giant bong coolers, they were called. Um, they look like a giant bong and they would cool the water by dropping it and you'd lose water due to evaporation all the time. Um, but they could get sub-ambient, but only like a couple of degrees, but yeah, sub-ambient. Um, there used to be this um, base module, you would sit your PC on it and it was this little refrigeration unit. Uh, yeah, I don't remember the brand, but I looked at one of those, they were like $1,200 back in the... Oh, early two thousands. Early two thousands. It would have been before two thousands. This one because it was beige. There was also a a, a four, three or four bay uh, bong water, water no, no, no. unit that was an evaporative cooler. Not a bong water cool, bong water cooled PC. It was called a bong cooler. Why does that have change your heat exchanger after it clogged up? I know he did. I know he did. But he he was dumb idea to start with. Heat exchanger right from square one. Um. Yeah, no, it, it, the coolers looked like it, they run on a shower head and they look like a bong because you'd have to have air, you'd have to have forced air at the bottom of a giant pipe which would flow, up, the air would flow up the pipe as water flowed down through like a shower head. And what would happen is because you're forcing air to run against the water, you'd end up losing a whole lot of water per day, right? So you'd have to drain the water to, um, in turn cool the air. Yep. So you'd have to top up the water all the time. And the pumps right at the bottom of that, underneath underneath where the water lands, because submerged pumps, because that's all we had back then. Yep. This water cooling was just... Um, it was a pond pump. Cast, cast stuff and aquarium stuff. Yep. It was a pond pump. And if you were lucky, you could get something that would go on a CPU that was somewhat designed for a CPU. Um, Zalman was one of the, I think one of the first brands that broke out and actually started doing, oh, and Gigabyte, and Gigabyte actually Zalman started doing, Alpha doing, cool. Alpha cool? maybe Alpha Cool? Not Alpha Cool, they, they sort of came a bit later. Um, there was another brand before Zalman, but Zalman was an early one. Zalman was an early one. They, they did everything, everything cool. I can't remember it. Uh, and... Yeah, I had early, early, early thermal take. Therm thermal take, thermal take. Thermal take. They also oh, even... jump into everything. They're an everything brand. Uh, Arterial 2 Joule 
560 water box from Singularity Computers. That sounds new. Not bits power. Um, and Singularity Computers are Australian, aren't they? I think they are. Who is? Singularity Computers. I don't know. I know there's one J's Two Cents uses for custom water cooling gear, which is Australian. I think they're down where you are, actually. Huh. Fox, I don't think you're going to get in with T King. Um, water cooling PC bong cooler. Yeah, there's something wrong with my browser. I don't think I'm going to find one. Not with a quick Google search. Oh, no, I found one. It's a bong cooler. It's a bong cooler. I found a bong cooler. It took five seconds. Overclock.net, of course. <laughs> the, the, the home of all this crap. Hey, I I, I, I I spent more than my fair share of time on Overclockers. I come at you. Oh, yeah, the true place. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, that's massive. Yeah, it's massive. I mean, it would have to be for, for what it's doing. Uh... I love how it's just drain pipe fittings. Because the, the, you need 120 mil fans. What size does drain pipe come in? 120 mil. You get a conversion on, on on there to bring it down to like you know smaller. You know something more reasonable. Yeah, the gallon bucket's a bit much. Normally it'd just be one pipe, one pipe reservoir at the bottom, right? You just put a, a, a bit of pipe there with an end cap. You put the pump at the bottom, right? And it would force water out to the PC and then back to a shower head at the top and drop back down with a fan here to force air in. Good old ABS. Sick, yep. of it, sick of it being used as a uh, water cooler. Um, you can use it as a potato cannon. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it does convert across pretty well. There's a bit of crossover. Mm. Yes. Bong coolers definitely existed. Definitely existed. They also, definitely did a good job. F -f 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 yeah, I know. I'm waiting for the ad. It's it's just finished. Because Mikel won with the C Bus Club. Because it's important that you convert the C Bus into a club. Uh, Use the entire C Bus. Yes, the entire bus. The entire bus has a club. It looks like a club. Sweet Orange Murray put it out. Hey, the, the bus looks like a club. I'm like, yep, it does. Okay, fine. Yep, it can be a weapon. Um. Whoever thought C block could be a weapon? No, of course it can be. Like a boss. Uh, yeah, Mike! Can be. A weapon of much pain. Yeah, yeah, for me. Mike, thank you for the raid. A cheetah has arrived. What are you cheating at? That's a weird bong. It is a very weird bong. That's for PC cooling. Mike told us to say hi to JD. Hi! Nice bong. We're talking about evaporative coolers, actually, Mike. Hmm. Twilight, how you doing? We're looking for today's Friday Fact video on YouTube. You guys are late. Or am I just wrong and you're being too anxious? Uh, no, no, we're late because Mojo was busy. Is that plumbing? It is. So we're covering really quickly. I'm late and now JD's just been stalling for the last hour. Shush. 40 minutes. Um, talking about evaporative coolers for PCs. Old school, old school. Going back to like the 90s water cooling. Uh, I like uh, the picture that you can see second row below the ads um got the classic um looks like athlon xp motherboard going there this one with the blue pipes in the, the middle blue pipes in the middle this one you said ad i don't pay attention to the ads oh second call this one okay you're ignoring Let's the ads down yeah you're ignoring the, the shopping ads i pay attention to these because they chance are they want to yeah, want one yep 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 looks like a bong to me that's what they used to be called they were called bong bong coolers they're an evaporative cooler. So you'd have a 120 mil fan, 80 mil fan here, pumping air in. You'd have a pool pump at the bottom because the back in the 90s, uh, aquarium pumps and car parts is all you had for PC water cooling. Um, so you'd have a pump down here. It would take the water that's been cooled out to the PC and then bring it up to the top and drop it in a shower head and drop it back down. And because you had a fan forcing air against the water, it would become an evaporative cooler, which means it constantly lost water every day. 
can we get a fact check, please? Uh, this is exactly, exactly. I think I own this bong. Uh, well, if you own a bong with 120 mil opening, you have a problem. A very big problem. <laughs> mm. So, Mike, you've rated a good time. About to do the Friday facts with my good friend Mojo. It's definitely a boofing bong. Okay, yeah, it, it, yeah. You, multiple people, maybe. Maybe. Mm. 20 or 20 mil <laughs> opening is for the cleaning. Okay. 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 Or it's for putting the fan here to bring the bong air down and out and just spread it across the whole room. Hey, the Friday facts is actually pretty good. Uh, it's all about audio. It's noisy. <laughs> mm hmm. Which means I'm going to ignore chat for the next, I don't know, however long it takes to do the Friday facts because uh, this goes over to YouTube and I post over YouTube. I don't know. Hopefully later today. Uh, uh, but thank you, Mike, for the raid. I hope Factorio is treated you well. I hope chat's treated you well. Uh, but I need to get this done because it's already midday. And as everyone pointed out, the Friday facts came out, what? 10 p.m., 11 p.m. hour night? Yeah, 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 yeah a while like ago. 11 p.m. No, like, like almost 24 hours ago? Yeah. Uh, only accused of cheating five times. That's not bad. I, I've heard much worse. I've seen much worse out of you, Mike. But they accused you of cheating five times. Did anybody, did anybody prove it? Did anybody take a clip? Is there any proof? Have you deleted the clips yet? You need, need to check the stream, mate. In case somebody clipped it. In case, in case in somebody has proof. Even deleting it doesn't delete it. <laughs> deleting it removes the link and therefore people can't find it. It's no longer listed. Just like when you delete something from your hard drive. You can't find it. It's no longer listed. It still exists. But it's not listed it's still anymore. still the direct link. It still finds it, though. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we're going to get this done. Uh, so, you ready, Major? Yes. Yes, I am. All right. G'day, mate, and welcome to Friday Facts number 396. Sound improvements in 2.0. How are you doing, uh, my good friend? Mm, soundy Mojo. Mo mojo of sound. <laughs> sound of Mojo. I don't know. Let's go with it. <laughs> High quality. Hello. High quality sounding Mojo. Yes, let's go with that. Uh, today we're looking at... Fidelity. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I don't record. I don't record your audio in high, high fidelity, sir. Sorry, sorry. But looking at and listening to uh, the many sound improvements we've got, we've been working on for 2.0. Now, Mojo, let's first off talk about the existing sound in Factorio. Because Factorio, it's, let's be honest, it's 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 dated. It's it's a number of years old yeah. now. Um, it has sound. It. it has music. It has sound, yes. It has it a good music. soundtrack that's, that's worked well and stand the test of time. It's, it's above average for... For most games, the sound stage is pretty good. Ah, uh, you say? Okay. I disagree. I disagree. I, I think the sound is a bit dated. It's it's a bit. It's definitely showing its age, though. Yeah. Okay. I've been listening to it for however many years now. It's not only that. It's 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 other games have done sound so much better to give you the feel of the game. And I think Factorio is is lacking in that improvement. That that is a somewhat recent issue improvement. Something that's only come up in really the last three, four, five years. But sound improvement has just taken a leap in in quality that yeah, might not have true. been there in previously. But yes, um, sound tends to be neglected. Um, it does in games in general. It does. It does. So uh, we have working sound accents. So a sound any makes when it's active is usually a single looping main sound. Hence why it's a little bit dated. Some enemies might have sounds that play when they become active or when they stop working or go idle. A good example would be the car. If you put fuel in it, it starts making sound. If you jump in it, it starts making more sound. You get out of it, it's less sound. Take the fuel out, even less sound. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there are several properties and modifiers can be used to control working sounds a little bit more, but there's only so much so much one can do creatively with a single looping sound when it needs to work in all situations. The ability to synchronize the sounds of a machine to its animation was high on the list of requested audio features. When I came up with the concept of sound accents, shorter sounds which would get played at specific frame 
of a specific animation. Initially, I expected the machine would get one or two of these sound accents to complement its main sound, and that would be it. But Ian, on the other hand, Ian had other ideas. Starting with the foundry, beside the main sound, there would be 12 sound accents used to emph emphasize individual components and sections of the animation. And he didn't stop here. We, there are now machines with even more complex sound sets. We might show them at some later date, but let's get back to the foundry. So I am going to in post, I'm going to boost all these audio tracks because they're a little subtle as being Factorio is. Yeah, and I, I think to really get them, some of them definitely need to be boosted. There's one further on that I've listened to five times and I, I want to listen to it boosted as well. Um, but we have the normal foundry. Which I'm going to interrupt. Sounds really good. It sounds really accurate. You can hear different parts of the machine making different sounds, and it, it all makes sense. And then yeah. on the right-hand side, we have the same sound loop, but we have the bigger box representing the main sound loop, and the smaller one represents some of these accent sounds. So... You can definitely hear when some things kick into action and other things don't. Uh, but then Factorio has the Factorio problem, which is, well, when you add speed modules to speed something up or productivity modules to slow something down, or technically if you're in a low power state, buildings go faster. Um, so they have the foundry with the sped up on the left and speeding up sounds is something you can do as somebody who works in video editing and, and all that sort of stuff, speeding up is something you can do pretty easy. Slowing down is um, uh, difficult. Yes. It only works to a, uh, a certain extent before it starts to sound like chipmunks. And... Well, speeding up, so the speeding up sounds, sounds fine, okay? Um, you can physically hear that the machine is running fast without even looking at the machine. But the slowing down, because they've used accents, there are only sounds that click kick in at certain frames of the machine. And they have been lengthened slightly, but they've also been pitch shifted so they don't end up at too low a pitch. It's okay-ish. But if you had a, a a foundry that has, what, three prob mods in it? Or three modules? Four modules? Three, I think it is. And you put all prods mods in it slowing it right the way down and had a lower power state it was running at like less than 50 percent of the speed the sounds profile wouldn't work It'd anymore terrible yeah yeah the pouring of liquid metal it doesn't yeah. work um and as an animation, that's fine. You can just accept that it pulls slower and it's part of the animation and just disbelief will let you get there. But the audio, the audio is what makes or makes or breaks some games. Um, games have put a lot of effort into it. Like Satisfactory is one I come back to every time because the... They put a lot of effort in. They put a lot of effort in. They, 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 they've got one sound dev on there. I think Joel is his name. Oh, sorry, Yol. Uh, uh, and, and Wonders. Wonders in the satisfactory for sound. But there are many games that just it failed because they just don't bother. Yeah. You know? they, they don't bother or they don't really <laughs> understand it. Actually, as a side note, one of the other some other games that I particularly know for good sound design is um the Batman Arkham series. They're really Oh good. okay. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. It's 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 a game that would benefit from good sound rather than uh, and funnily enough, cheap horror games tend to have decent sound in them. Oh, yes. Um, because they don't spend the money on graphics or anything else, but they'll spend money on sound because the sound paints more of the game than anything else. Um, so, yes, uh, they also have multiple main working sounds. So now we have multiple sounds for one machine that can form sound accents. We could do something interesting by having multiple sounds, multiple main sounds as well. As it turns out, yes. We combine it with some other tricks of ours, mainly active machining, the ability to match the sound's volume or playback speed the machine's activity rate activity rate is the machine reports how fast it is doing what it's doing could be as simple as reporting 1.0 when it's working uh and 0.0, 0, 0 otherwise it could be a vehicle speed or something a little bit more creative 
Let's look at, a, look at a couple of examples of vehicles, see what we can do with 2.0. In 1.1, a car has one main body sound that plays faster as the car goes faster. This is serviceable, but we can do better. Let's use two sounds, an idling sound and a driving sound. As the car speed increases, the idling sound volume quickly decreases until it's completely silent. At the same time, the driving sound volume increases from silent to its maximum volume. At some point, the driving sound pitch started to increase as well, although this is scaled, so it doesn't scale too high. Uh, the tank receives similar treatment together with separate sound for its tracks. So this example is interesting because the car, before we play the video, the car heads off, it goes over an ore patch, then it hits stone, which stone path has a movement bonus for you and for vehicles. Then concrete. Basically everything. Yeah, everything except biters. Biters don't get a and movement trains. bonus. And trains, true. Um, so yes, then concrete, which gives it a bigger movement bonus. And then the tank comes back along the same path. And yeah, I don't know so much about the idling sound. Like it just disappears. Um, but... And I don't... What did you say earlier about the idling sound? Um, it just sort of... Or the, the running sound just sort of goes, but it never really... It seems... The, or the idling seems to linger for a bit too long, and then it doesn't really ramp up. Yeah. So, um, the the crossover... The concrete. The crossover might be... Need to be a little bit shorter, I guess. So the car sounds like it's going at full speed earlier and the island disappears earlier. Uh, let's play the clip. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot more detail, especially for the car. The car, you can hear it driving yeah. across the ore. You can hear, I think there's a subtle sound for when you're driving on concrete, or sorry, on bricks rather than concrete. Yeah, there seems to be a different rolling noise. Yeah, yeah. And the tank, I think a lot of it's lost due to the track, the separate track for the tracks for the tank. Yeah, that was hard to say. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, I think maybe the tracks need to be a little bit quieter for the track, for the tank tracks, yes. Uh, and overall, it's improvement. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I like the fact, I especially love the fact that we can hear you driving over all. That, I think, is going to add to the game. I'm also now wondering if there's going to be different sound for sand. Assuming we're getting there's sand. An interesting one. I also like... The, like yep. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if the game actually distinguishes between sand or not. I don't know if it does. Well, mods have a penalty for running across sand. Oh, Factorio yeah. Yeah, this movement penalty. did so at one stage. Drive it. Well, Factorio did at one stage for walking across sand. I don't know if it still exists, because I know a lot of people complain about it. So it might have oh, been yeah, removed. Too, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, it may, the, the underlying logic may still be there. Oh, well, uh, the, the, it's a different terrain set. So, yes, you could have a different sound for driving across sand without a problem. Um, as long as you've got crossfade between grass, sand, grass, sand, because there are going to be those patches which are grass, sand, grass, sand, grass, sand, as you're driving across the edge of a biome. Um, but yeah, it, it is an improvement. It's a big improvement. I, I love the fact that Factory is coming back to audio because I think audio is such a big, important part of games. Um, it is. So I like the fact they're coming back to this, but I think the best thing when it comes to audio is don't have the professional do the testing and have, you know, this is what I've come up with, this is the perfect blah, 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 because they actually have good, proper hearing. Take somebody who doesn't care and has crap hearing and then give it to them. If they're impressed, then everybody else is a lot more impressed because they won't hear a lot of the subtleties that a professional audio engineer will. Um, but then we have trains. And trains is, um, 
Of course. Gotta have trains. Gotta have trains. Gotta have trains. Now, trains also have elevated rails now, which is gonna add a new sound effect. Um, and I think it sounds exactly like a roller coaster. And I'm, I'm willing to bet because it's easy to get sound files for roller coasters than it is for elevated train tracks. I'm willing to bet it's borrowed from uh, from 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 a um uh, a roller coaster. But yes, trains. Trains got an update too. There's a lot of people commenting that it sounds like a roller coaster tycoon. Yep. I don't have good hearing, but I'm willing to bet. I think, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure there's a different sound effect when it's going through the chicanes. I'm not sure. I, I, this is one of the reasons I'm boosting the volume for these clips in YouTube video. Um, I'm willing to bet there's a little bit of a... There's an extra sound added for the, the going through the chicanes for the train. Uh, definitely on the ground. Maybe not so much on the elevated, but yeah, definitely on the ground tracks, there seems to be. Uh, but yes, they've added additional machine sounds. Did you notice how I did the sound when the car was going over the different tiles and resources? Uh, the sounds of the cargo wagon doors made in the previous video. They don't work well as working sounds, so a different approach was needed. We could add some special logic into each entity's update to handle additional sounds. We've done that for some things in the past. For example, the artillery turret uh, had its rotational sound in the update logic, which was fine unless you did too much, ro uh, too much artillery shooting speed at which point the sound file broke. Uh, um, but it's fine. Uh, fine as long as the number of entities with additional sound logic is very small, it becomes inefficient and wasteful when you try to add sounds for entities uh, where there is a lot of like mining drills and robots. Yeah, robots don't really have much of a sound anymore. I remember they used to make a sound, but I don't think they do anymore. Mojo? In the year canal uh, with the deep sounds and and various bloops that they make. That nah, mojo's broken. I broke mojo. Um. Oh, the thing thing drop out. Oh, he's back. He's back. Robots oh, sounds. Robots. Yeah, all the beeping and the blooping that they used to make. Yeah. Um. No, um the, used to be used to assault your ears with them. They don't make that anymore, do they? Uh, still when they're charging. Oh, okay, so they got a charging sound, but no, they used to have a sound if they flew over you that obviously got removed. He was mimicking the robot sounds. Um, yeah, it was in my impersonation of a robot. Yes, yes. Uh, so, mining miners do have a sound, but it's like a background ambient sound. It's not really specific to what process they're up to. But with the bigger miners, they've decided to add a couple of additional sounds. And, oh, I tell you, Taurus, that was the other thing. If you have too many of them and they fire too fast, they hit a maximum cap on the number of sounds that can be played at once. So you end up with silent oh. artillery. Um, be warned, your artillery can be so so many of them and so deafening of them that you end up losing all factorial sound for a little while. Um, or, or, or you get like half a sound and then it just goes silent. Yeah. And random. You get random half firing sounds and then silence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there was definitely some issues with the cap on the sound limit. Uh, so they create a new system, additional sounds. A bunch of old and new entities already take advantage of this system. Uh, so they want to look at one of the big mining drill. Last time it was shown, I had placeholder sounds, which was probably from the standard mining drill, I think. But um, these are... I don't know. There's sounds for the gears moving to move the whole head. And then there just sounds like general crunching sounds. I don't know if I'm for or against it. Yeah, because there's three of them. You can't tell if the thing moving is really making a sound or not. It's kind of hard to distinguish. Yeah, the, 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 the big gears on the sides, moving the whole head, definitely have some large ge gear sounds. Um, large gear, possible squeaking sound, I can't quite tell. Oh, again, this is why I want to boost it, because it's going to be, these are all things that you're going to pay attention to once, 
and you'll notice once consciously and then from there on it just becomes part of the background of the game and it's, it's like background noise well, it's, you it's, never notice it again. Yeah, but that, that, that's half the point, all right? It's like games where people like the SimCity and Anno, where they spend ages decorating a small part of the map, which you spend a lot of time look, looking at all the animations and seeing how things work, but then you never look at a second time because it becomes background, but it adds ambience to the game. It does add, it does add an awful lot to the game. So... Yeah, big mining drills, the sounds they make, you're going to listen once, you're going to be, oh, wow, that sounds really awesome, and then you won't pay direct attention to it again, is probably the best way of putting it. But if you walk into a field of them, you're going to know what they're doing. By the same token, if you walk next to one that has no ore, you'll probably realize very quickly uh, that they don't have any ore because they're not making any sounds. Um, so then ambient sounds. We had many ideas for 1.0 that we weren't able to implement in time. One was having a more immersive ambient system. Rather than just one wind sound, I devised the wind system that played at different wind tracks when you were zoomed in. One was quite basic. And then a more interesting one is you zoomed out cross fade between the two. This involved the idea of having a semi-persistent ambience. For example, on Volcanus, you can hear the sound of distant volcanoes at a lot low level with pauses of varying lengths. But how about adding more specific ambient sounds based on the player's location? For this, we couldn't use the usual game industry approach of ambient trigger boxes or pre-painted regions because our ma maps are generated, not ha handmade. So we came up with the idea of adding sounds to tiles and entities based on specific conditions. Once we had this taken place, I started adding a bunch of sounds such as gentle water lapped bodies of water and leaf rustles to leave uh, for tr to trees there we go i uh, then to leaf and eight. Yeah, yes yes i then realized we could have invisible creatures for example small non-hostile bir alien birds in the trees that only played if the player is within a certain radius of the tree trees numbering above a specified threshold there is also the random pause between each sound taking this idea further we're able to specify whether they play according to the time of the day or the zoom level of the camera That one I don't actually think I have to boost. I think that one's all right. I find that it's interesting. Pretty, pretty yeah. It's yeah. the right amount of subtle. Yeah. Uh, the thing that immediately hit my mind was what happens when you pollute the area? Because that's just a nice clean area. Do you kill off all the birds or do the, the dead trees still have birds in them? Well, that... Does the water change from, you know, the normal rustling to just a more toxic glooping sound? Uh, does yeah, yeah. Green? D d does it turn into more of an oil sound? More of a... Mm. Um, I don't know, what does a giant vat of lube up against the shoreline sound like? Because I think that's how water would turn after it goes green. Yeah. Um, but it does have a note here. Next time you're seeing a forest on fire, remember it might be somebody's home. Sure, I'll remember that. I'll use grenades instead. That way I have a good chance of killing the wildlife at the same time. <laughs> Instant kill so they don't burn. Yeah. They don't suffer the burning. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we sort of knew that anyway in the first place because it's like, there's a biter's home in here. We better set it on fire <laughs> while we're burning it. Yes. Yes, 100%. That and the trees are in the way. Let's be honest. Yeah. They are the real enemy. Um, but I am wondering, because I'm wondering whether they've they've painted a, a, a specific tree with the option to have this sound if it has enough trees around it, blah, 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 or whether they've actually made invisible creatures. Because I'm waiting for the bug report of, hi, my base sounds like you know, a menagerie of birds because for some reason some bug got implemented in the game and all of the ones that I had killed, removed, whatever, spawned at zero, zero, which happens to be where my base is. And it sounds nothing but, you know, like a bird aviary um, with frogs and stuff in the background because all the invisible creatures got moved there. Of course they did. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, the impression I get is that it seems to be the tiles rather than the trees or something else. Well, yeah, tiles or an entity. So I think tying it to well, a... We, it's trigger condition depending on entities around the tile is the impression I get. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, if you had a mod which gave you spawnable trees, you would get birds in the base. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm wondering if it's a tree. Right. Um, yeah. yeah if they... you get the right... Con it's, it's all about the conditions. So if you get match the conditions just right, yeah, you get birds in your base. Yeah. 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 Uh, Killing idea of adding sounds to tiles and entities based on specific conditions. So... Yeah, the right type of tiles in the base that probably haven't been concreted, and the right amount of mm, entities, trees, trees. Yeah, yeah. Next time you do city block, you can have like a nature block and then a non-nature block and see how long the nature block lasts. Um, if the integration has spawn trees, there you go. There you go. Instant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instant build, 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 bird and, and reptile wildlife in the middle of the base. So, uh, 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 item sounds. When we released one point Kovrex told me. He, it, it was his wish to have a specific inventory sounds in the game. At that time, we only had one sound for moving items, and it was okay, maybe a little bit boring, and it didn't give you any special feedback. He explained they needed a bit more like the wire connect and disconnect sounds, which are very, very unique, and this helped me to understand what he meant. Through trial and error, I worked out what sounds could be grouped together, i.e. I, uh, small and large metallic items, which needed to be unique. Some needed more iteration than others, and was sometimes hard to try and figure out what the sound should be. After all, what is the sound of a speed module? Mm, electronic. Yeah. Uh, in that particular case, I ended up using a synth sound as it needed to be abstract. So me and Mojo have already gone through this, and you don't know how you feel about it, right? Yeah, I'm indifferent. I'm also disappointed they didn't show the sound of a speed module. I am too. I am too. Uh, I'm also uh, unknown. Very, very unknown when it comes to this particular feature. Yeah. Um, like, Let's see how we do. Well, belt, belt sounds like a chunk of fabric, which I yeah. guess sort of works, but I sort of imagine the belt to be more rubber. Like or or metally or your know, kathunk. No, there's there's too much metal in the game already between all the different ingots and the engines and the the gears and everything yeah, else. Yeah, that's the only thing. Yeah, you you have to go with rubber. You got to vary it up a little bit. Um, so this is why I'm sort of expecting rubber. Like, I have. Do we get a sound for an inserter? We did, and that yes. was odd. That it was, was a sound. Of, it was a literal sound of an inserter. No, it's more electronic. It's 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 weird. I, I don't know how I feel it's about it. It's the sound this. of an inserter reaching. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, it is if you reaching. zoom right the way in. You never hear it because there's too many other things around it. And you yes. hit the sound cap. Yes. I don't know how I feel about this one. Um, I think it might I be too like, much. I, the one thing I do like about this, this thing is that they... Um, there was an obvious disconnect between the sm Team Smelter and Team Factory. What do you mean? Oh, you mean the 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 yeah. the, the the belts? Yeah, the, the copper switches yep. and the iron switch lanes. It, it, it was Great. multiplayer. It was multiplayer. Obviously, it was multiplayer. Or I don't know. Somebody's doing something that requires copper power poles. Power poles, maybe on the top line. No, green, green, that's green circuits. That's copper wire and then green circuits into inserters, into gears, into belt. That's green science at the top, even though it's coming out the bottom. Yeah. It makes perfect sensibles. Yeah, use a long head inserter and leave your iron side and your iron side and your copper side and your copper side. Yeah. Yeah, there was a disconnect between the people that were... Building the smelters and building the base. Obviously, you can tell when one, st one team stopped and the next team started. It's like roadworks. You can tell where one team stops and mm -hmm. the next team starts. Yep. Uh, so then they've also added advanced volume control. Uh, it was mentioned with the ambient sounds, we have more control over their volume. When this is done, Ian would start picking, would start asking if it could be used for other sounds as well. I didn't see a reason 
mm, why not? So I took all these parameters and put them together in advanced volume control properties. This let us do some neat things. The attenuation with distance can be changed from the default linear to a more natural sounding exponential curve. There's also the option of logarithmic, cosine or S curve, or no attenuation at all. If you want to do something different, we can change how the sound attenuates with the zoom level in a similar way. It's possible to specify the darkness threshold in order to have certain sounds play only at nighttime. Factorio horror themed map coming soon in 2.0. Somebody's going to release it. Somebody's going to release it. Guaranteed. Um, last thing in the toolbox are the dynamic sound modifiers. This allows to change the the level of the sound for a specific game context. They, these can, they, they can be dynamic volume modifiers but only applied in the menu simulation or when in tips and tricks when driving a vehicle when a train is on elevated rails. So I like this, but it doesn't specify whether these are open to a user. Yeah, or a map maker slash modern. Well, I assume they're open to a modder in some way, shape or form. Oh yeah, that... It's technically implied that but, you have access to it. Yeah, but I, I'm wondering if it's open. I'm wondering if it's available in the normal settings menu or if it's in the, the rest setting menu where you have access to a lot of other behind the scene features that can be accessed technically from the main menu. Um, and if I remember, I'll put a link up the top right hand corner how to access that menu. Um, but yeah, it's it's because there are definitely some sounds that get under people's skin, like nails on a chalkboard. Um, it's one of those sounds that doesn't worry me in the slightest. I don't care. But other people, it really gets to them. Um, there's one particular sound, I don't remember what it is, that, that gets under my skin, and, and most people just don't care. So I'm wondering if there are options for people to turn those particular sounds off or turn them right the way down. Um, just as a... I guess it would fall under accessibility. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, an accessibility option. Um, but yeah, uh, they also address sound aggregation. So in certain situations, there can be a lot of sounds wanting to be played at the same time. Combat with many biters is a typical scenario. Biters and tyrants attacking uh, create a lot of sound. Uh, if there wasn't a hard limit on the number of sounds you could play at a given time, it could quickly turn to a wall of noise. Sound aggr aggregation is one way to deal with this. When a noise we've been playing many times, uh, instances of that exceeding a certain limit, could be culled or have their volume reduced. Go back to Mojo, uh, talking about the half an artillery sound and then it just stops dead. Yep. Uh, because that system is already in 1.1, but it can be used for only a handful of sounds in specific scenarios. For 2.0, the system was greatly improved and usable by most sounds and as more control over which sounds will be adjusted was added. For these changes in the soundscape of those problematic scenarios is now under control. But at the same time, they added sound priority. So related to the problem of having too many sounds is that sometimes there wouldn't be enough resources left for more important sounds. For example, GUI effects or certain player actions. The obvious solution is to introduce a priority system for sounds. And that's exactly what they did. To kick things off, many player actions like building were given a higher priority and several biter sounds were deprioritized. Which then leads to the thing that Woob excels at being their test suites. So they've added a bunch of tests uh, for the existing features along with for previous features. Um, just tech check that the sound works update to update uh, along with being able to test that the new additions are working as planned. Not as implemented because that's not obvious all the time as, yep. Yep, as planned, yep. Uh, and it is um, much larger than what they'd originally planned. Obviously, uh, having such a test suite provide extremely helpful when redesigning, expanding different parts of the audio system. Very helpful, make these pesky bugs won't creep their way back in. And this comes us to the most important of this one, which is the music. So, the music. we're going to get a new soundtrack for Factorio Space Age. Or at the very least, an expanded soundtrack. Hmm... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's a DLC, so technically it's going to be a new soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm interested because we, we already covered it. Uh, the music was it's done by one guy back in, well, it came out in, what was it? Uh, December? It, it was The soundtrack was released in, or, or the, the current music was added to the game in version 12, which was end of 2015. It was like 28th of December 2015 yeah. or something. Yeah. 
and basically then, 2016. Yeah, and then it was put up on Steam in Feb 2016, I want to say. At least that's when it yeah, first started popping Steam into the internet. Yeah. So, yeah, um, the Factory music hasn't been updated since. And in fact, I can't even find links to the guy who originally did the Factory music. It seems he's disappeared off the interwebs, probably because he's gone and got you know a different job doing something else. But we haven't had um any updates to the soundtrack since 2016. Um, that's a long time. That's an awful long time. You've been listening to the same 20, 20 tracks of the soundtrack for eight years. Unless you um, turn music off. Turn music off and play something else. But it it, it does mean uh, Mojo. <laughs> Which is what I did like years ago. Oh, you did it like years ago. Okay. Uh, I haven't done that. I haven't done that. Uh, which then begs the question, exactly how many hours have I listened to um, the Factorio soundtrack? In, um... Uh, I, I, I've i been playing for close to eight years. Yeah. Probably a good thing that it's not handled by Spotify, then. Um, that it, would really screw with an algorithm. <laughs> it would be fine, okay? It's only like 12, 13, 14, 15... I, I don't know. I got to 10,000 hours. I stopped counting. Okay, I stopped counting. I started playing the standalone version more often of Factorio. Don't touch the Steam version because it keeps a record. It's a lot of hours. An awful lot of hours. Um, yep, yep. I can pick that soundtrack anywhere. Um, so I'm interested in what they add. Very, very interested in what they add. Um, mm. Yeah, a soundtrack listening to eight years later. Um, that's very rare. Um but I think that's really where we need to end the, this Friday Facts. Yep. I don't think there's anything else to add. I'm interested to see how these sounds work when they're actually implemented and in the game. I'm hoping for a lot because um, we have our two. We have Ian and Domino. Ian's the one that's been there for a while. Yeah, Ian's been there for a while. For a while, yeah. Yeah. He came in uh, prior to the updated artillery, which then they forgot to add to the game for like 12 months. They did the sound, they announced the Friday facts, they said, here it is, and then forgot to actually implement the audio files in the game for like 12 months. And I just ragged on them for 12 months in Friday facts. <laughs> 12 months. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yep. Um, so they added the, he added the artillery sounds, he made a big improvement to the sound engine leading up to the 1.0 release. And then um, we've got Donino, which seems to be less sound, but more programming to give. So the engineering side. Yeah, the engineering yes, the side software side yeah to give ian the ability to add more sounds to factorio um and do more with the soundscape of factorio which i'm excited to see I i'm really hoping that i can turn around and say yes my top two games you get know, satisfactory is right up there for sound design and factorio is right beside it right behind it um because there's been a lot of changes a lot of a lot of improvements um but yeah your arkham city on i haven't played arkham city Maybe I have to add that to my list. It was free on Epic ages ago. That's how I ended up getting it. I think I've got the free version on Epic that I haven't installed or played. <laughs> anyway, with that said and done, uh, let's leave this Friday Facts here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And we'll see you next week for hopefully not quite as late a Friday Facts number 397. What happens with 400? Wow. Um, I have a little party. A little um, party blower goes off on the screen. You know, the little confetti comes down. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, I'll wait for that. Anyway, that's it. Which, me which means it's more work for you. I've committed you now. Uh, I've got to do it. They don't do it. I thought they don't do it. No, you got to add it in post. Oh, I mean, they do it, but you got to add it in post so that everyone can actually see it. Okay. Otherwise, right. nobody will be able to see it. All right, that's it. Okay, that's it. We're out. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. All right, done. Friday effects done. Uh, they're going forward with the updates progress. Uh, Pell, how are you doing? Uh, sorry, I was recording video for YouTube. Yes. Yes. They're going forward. Uh, crunchy snow. The vehicle's driving over rocks. That sounds about right. Uh, uh, I hope he keeps his chat where I can see it. Yes. I can. Have I heard of a machine? Can't find a page on the internet. Archive.org. Uh, I read that at the time, but it's not true. Uh, Wayback Machine doesn't, doesn't catalog every page. Far from it. Yeah, um, it doesn't catalog anything with a robots set. If you, for those who remember what a robots.txt file is. Oh wow, people still pay attention to that? 
Yeah, um, an archive respects the whatever it says. So the first thing it does is look for the robots.txt, and if it says no archive, then it just moves on. <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, no, I've had to look at, I've had to use the Wayback Machine to look up. The most common place I use it is when Sassy says, oh, I found this on Facebook. You know, an ad, ad for something. And it, it's something that has enough merit and credit that I might go, okay, let's look at it. Wayback Machine. Wayback Machine. Look at the webpage from like three months ago. Was it advertising something entirely different? Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, Go to Bed Shells sent me a, what looked as it like a very professionally designed company for somebody who designs products. And then after digging through the webpage a little bit, it, it seemed like it was somebody who, who their whole job is to, yeah, design products. So do that final, the final Apple touch to make things look pretty and nice. And um, they had a couple of webpages linking to their own store and then a couple of linking to offsite where it looks like they've worked with somebody, but they're linking to it because it's past work. Um, it turns out a lot of it is just remarketed stuff from elsewhere sold at half the price. It all looks very pretty, <laughs> has a very high price, um, but yes, yeah, the sort of thing that people would sucker into. And yeah, if you went back on the Wayback Machine, the page was doing stuff very, very different. Last backup, which was like six months ago. Um, uh, uh, yeah, he hides it so he's not tempted. No, it's on the screen. I just ignore it entirely. File compression ruins it. What file compression? Uh, the hash file compression ruins what? Audio? No. Mm. SC does have different sounds for different tiles. Does it? Definitely got Rollercoaster Tycoon flashbacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rollercoaster Tycoon screams. Oh, wow. Yep. Wooden roller coaster is just a big metal machine on elevated wooden tracks. Yeah, no. Technically, it's a big wooden machine on wooden track. I mean, there are metal rail heads. Yeah, there's and metal rail. Wheels. There's not a lot of metal. It's basically, a wood. Um, not a lot of metal. Yeah, they try to keep it as lightweight as possible. Uh, so scum pond, yeah, scum pond. Yep, yep. Uh, I hope they start tracking wildlife kills in the kill tracker. Oh, that would be bad. Mm. <laughs> Does that mean we can make lube hot, lube hot tubs? Only if you put all the smells around the river, uh, around the, around the, 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 what was water? Mm. Birds killed by trains. Oh, wow. Uh, chest sounds too hollow. Well, technically you are picking up an empty chest, a stack of empty chests. Yeah, it sounds more like a, A chunk of plate. Metal plate being picked up. Um, belt should be like airport luggage belt. Wait, which are rubber? Um, rubber and metal. There's probably just as much metal grinding as there is rubber. Uh, well, they've normally got one or two like like motorized belts. And the rest of it is just rubber rollers. Oh, well, metal rollers with rubber belt just running along them. Um, uh, varies. Uh, wonder how this space age is going to work with space exploration mod. Uh, space exploration is going to have to do a lot of recoding, but Arendel, the guy who makes the space exploration mod, exploration mod, was hired as a concept. I won't say concept artist. A I think it was concept artist. I think it was originally concept artist, but it's a lot more than that. It's 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 concept artist along with storyline, along with um he was hired to think for Woob. And basically the two will complement each other. Yep. Yeah. Don't like the music, only listen to ten thousand hours, yeah. Uh Thanks guys, I gotta call my mum back, told her I can't talk because I'm watching Jenny. Not a problem, Twilight. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna bail soon. Uh, when are we gonna play Stationers again? I don't think I've ever played Stationers. Which one's Stationers? Uh, 
I definitely have not played Station Years. I think I ruled it out as it took, takes too long. Yep. Station Years is too <laughs> slow to it's play. It's a lot of micromanaging. Uh, what was the other one? Space Engineer or something? Space Engineers, that's the fully Space World one, whereas Station Ears is just on a planet and dealing with building systems. Yeah. Like, it, it's very in-depth and very interesting. It's just long-winded. It's, it's the kind of thing... very slow. If you... If you... Basically, if you have no life, then Station Ears is where it's at. We'll have to pay attention to see if there's a Friday Facts 4 or 4. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Okay. Uh... So make sure 404 fell, falls on April, April 1st. Just make a joke out of it. Uh, what's that? Four weeks. One, two, uh, three. I don't think that's happening. No, it falls just a couple of weeks beforehand. Um, yeah. Yeah, a couple of weeks beforehand. Sorry. Uh, the uh, Facebook, the best place for everything newsworthy and credible. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Her family... Sassy's family is the perfect example of iPhone and Facebook. Okay, they're all on Facebook. They all have iPhones. They're all in the i system, right? Um, so they have, you know, i messages going back between every member of the family and then small subgroups for different messaging and everything else. She's on Android. So she's been out of that ecosystem since she met me like six years ago, five years ago. I swapped her across to Android. Um, cause she'd only ever had hand-me-down iPhones. Um, and I bought her a new Samsung when I upgraded mine at the same time. And yeah, they use Facebook for an awful lot as well. So she's on Facebook all the time. Also, she was using it for work. And some of the stuff they advertise, it's, it's just remarketed crap. Um, what was the last one she wanted? I think it was a cup that doesn't spill. Or something. Oh, it was a cup that you filled with water and then drank flavored water. The, the water had flavor because it smelled like it had flavor and therefore tricked your brain into thinking it had flavor. Oh, it permeated the smell out of the cup. Yeah, which, which works. I know it's a thing, okay? I know it's a thing. I know it works. But the thing that they're selling... Through the Facebook link, blah, 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 sponsored content, paid for ad. If you click on that, it gave you like 30% off. If you went to their website, it gave you the smell bottle. Air up. Oh, that sounds about right. Air up. Uh, search Google for air up. No, no, it wasn't air up. It was scent flow. It was this one. It was this. It was scent flow. Um, which, if you looked at the Wayback Machine, the website was selling a different bottle three months ago. Uh, and if you went directly... Oh, and it's Hydronox. So it's not even their stuff. They're selling a Hydronox kit, whatever Hydronox is, which I couldn't find any details on. So I don't think it exists. I think it's something they made up. Um, and they didn't... I'm pretty sure 404 does land on April Fool's. Or next to. I don't think it does. So it would be the Sadly, second... Sadly, it's actually the wrong one because it's supposed to be 418 because that's the actual April Fool's joke. What, 418 is an April Fool's HTML yes. era? Uh... 418, I'm a, I'm a teapot. It's... Um, a 1998 April Fool's joke. I'd forgotten about that. Uh, March 39. Yeah, I think it's a week shy. So that's... Uh, oh, 97, oh, 98, 99... 400, 41, 42, 43, 44. It'll fall on 29th. Which is close. Yeah. It's close. Now, do they accidentally skip a Friday Facts? Or did they do a Friday Facts 403.5? I don't know. Um... But yeah, this bottle. I did research. I couldn't find the Hydronux, whatever it was, because it looked like a remarketing of somebody else's stuff. And if you went to the webpage directly, they give you 50% off the bottles. Oh, and the bottles were marketed as, if you buy the family pack, 
if you buy the family pack with four bottles, we'd mark the price down to $20 or something. It would be super, super discounted. And it read like you're paying less the more bottles you buy total. Of course. But it's less per bottle. So then when you actually get to the checkout, you went from spending 50 bucks to suddenly $180 because you're now buying four bottles with four this and four that. And yeah. Um, uh, 80% of the taste is in your nose. Correct. Correct. So I know it exists. I know it exists. I know this all exists. All right. I just don't have faith in it. And I don't really want to spend $40 plus a kit plus blah, 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 blah to be stuck on a system where I have to keep buying their pods that work in their bottles, whatever, uh, at who knows what charge, they're, what price they're charging. Because they're now... Oh, it's one of them. Well, they're not charging you for liquid anymore that you're buying from them. They're charging you for a pod that goes... A little sink in, pod. Yeah, yep, yep. Which you then need to add your own water to. So you're drinking water, which is good. But you're now paying a lot extra for pods that they control the price on and that can go up or down or left or right um krug krug model uh they're charging you for a smell they're charging you for a pod that goes in the bottle to give your scent to you to to, to convince your brain that the water tastes the way they want it just drink more it water even, doesn't even actually flavor the water just it, it doesn't flavor the water <laughs> Keurig? I, I, yeah, I have no idea. Is this some marketing term? Uh... This is the, the, the coffee pods. The coffee pods. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't drink coffee. Yeah, I've heard about the coffee pods. Alright. Yeah, get, get you in cheap. Get you in suck it. And then charge you an arm and a leg for the actual pods. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. So I was like, yep, I, I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I'm happy to go look and do some research. And I spent 10 minutes. I'm like, well, no, no. And the company had been registered. The company had been registered. No, the website had been registered for like six months. And then I looked up, because here in Australia, you can look up a company and get who owns the company. Uh... And the company that owns Slurp Up or whatever they were called uh, is, tra is that company is owned by another company, which is like uh, a, a thousand investors or something. It's like it intentionally sounds dodgy. OK, uh, it, it, it it's skirting on the edge of dodgy and also to say you could look up what that company also owns and there's a long list of them and they're all like basic if you go and look at any of the names that they that they have like a product associated with the name very easily you know you know office furniture or this or that or, or you know whatever it happens to be but i looked it up i'm like yeah no this is obviously a we're buying it cheap from china through a gray market loop and bring it to Australia. We're going to pay for a Facebook campaign and sell a certain amount through sponsors or sponsored ads. And then organic marketing will take over and we'll just get rid of the whole lot. And then if it doesn't do well enough and we can't get enough interest to keep bringing in the pods, we'll just close up shop. Which happens... The next thing. Yep, happens all the time in Australia. It is so easy and so cheap because Asia is right there. It is super close. It is super easy to get things over. And uh, we have- Thankfully not as, not as cheap as it used to be. Oh, it's still pretty damn cheap. Oh, it's not like $5 for 24 hour air freight like it used to be. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. But it is still relatively cheap. It is very, very cheap. And also we have a lot of people that come from mainland China and like, live here or were born here or have cousins here or relatives here. And consequently, they might come here and start a business that only runs for six months whilst they're on a, a visa and not declare it and then leave. And then the business just, well, bad luck, boss. Uh, oh, yeah. Can't you give us a up, up chance? Shops here. Oculus Sorry. VR might not happen if we know we trust anything. Ah, no, 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 no. I can give a startup a chance. 
I, I can give up a startup a chance. I have kickstarted games. I've kickstarted many, many things, right? Because I believed in it. But here in Australia with a physical product, very, very dubious. Mm. Very dubious. Um, I was going to say pop-up uh, shops are very common here where the, there's a shop that will pop up and it'll just basically just empty an, a shipping container worth of stuff and then disappear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you get them all the time in shopping centers. You can you can yeah. pay for a kiosk, and I've seen kiosks that that run for three months, selling like especially leading up to Christmas, they'll sell just so much cheap stuff that you like Australian consumer warranty. You have twelve months worth of warranty and blah 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 blah, but that's only any good if you can contact the company who sold it to you. Yep, as soon as they move out, that's it. Yeah, if it broke, if it's broken by New Year's Day, um, they're gone. Uh, give us a chance. Jenny will kick some of us in chat. Oh, yeah, I kick everybody. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, yeah, yeah, no, I'll kick you. Yep, yep. Um, yep. um, yeah, look, uh, here in Australia, it's just, it's just, it's, it's notorious and it's very common. It also doesn't help that Australia is full of rich traders now that are just throwing money at everything. Yeah, that doesn't help. That doesn't help. Um, <laughs> Yeah, trades have been paid. Trade trades have been charging more and more over the last ten years, five years, because they've been high demand, low supply, and constantly. Yeah, they're, only in, they're only in high demand because they only work like three days a week. Yeah, well, they've, they've yeah, they worked out that you could work less and get charged and pay more. And if everybody accidentally did the same thing, it works out really well. Um, yeah. Uh, consequently, I, I still haven't got the front door replaced for the studio because I can't get a carpenter. And those that I've called are like, it's too small a job for me. I'm like, I need a whole fucking new door jam and a door installed. That's too small a job. That's half a day's worth of work, guaranteed. They won't take jobs that are that aren't worth more than you know five, six thousand. Yeah. Uh, says we should be going to the carpenter business. I could actually do the door and the door frame myself and the door, but I don't want to. I want to hire somebody who's done a dozen, two dozen, three dozen door frames and door hangings because it's the weakest soundproofing of the studio. You're also paying for the tools. By, I have the um, tools. Hi oh, you have the tools. What I mean was that um, if you don't have the tools, you're hiring someone means you're, you're paying for the indirectly getting the tools, the use of the tools through them. Mm -hmm. It's not just the uh, the skill. Yep. Yeah, last time I hired a carpenter to do a kitchen, I hired him to come out for the day. And at the same time, said, hey, condition of you coming out is when you're not using a tool, I want to be able to use it as well. Because you're going to be doing kitchen benches and stalls and stuff. I'm actually building the shelves and the cabinets one step ahead of you. Yeah. Um, do you have a store like Lowe's there? Lowe's here will install doors for you. Uh, Lowe's is a hardware, so a hardware store. We have a Bunnings. No. If I bought the door from them, they could recommend a list of, of tradies who would come out of and do it, but they're basically a home handyman quality. Uh. Yeah. And and they only care about anything to the extent, to the boundaries of the property, of the, <laughs> of the shop. What do you mean, Bunnings? Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 Stop caring as soon as, soon as you leave, yep. leave the lot. I'm giving a stop a chance. It's called the Metals Company. They'll start mining metals off the Seabed in 25. I'll become rich, rich, rich. Uh, Dumpill Hunter, I wish you the best. Mm. I wish you the best, Hunter. Uh, he's not a bot. He's actually not a bot. He's not a bot. <laughs> um, I, I wish you the best. I, I, you should, you should have gone. I, I, I had a, a similar one, but um, um. They're planning to mine asteroids in 2028. I think you would have been better off with that one. That's the one I invested with. I think they're going to have a better chance than the seafloor. Seafloor is very far down. It's very hard to get to. Space, way easier. Look at Musk. He did it. It can't be that hard. I've done a hundred times at Kerbal. It's easy. Build a big rocket, add lots of fuel, aim it up. Press space bar. Goes every time. Every time. Yep. 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 Should go on with the asteroids. Asteroid mining, way easier. Um... Way more profitable. Also, mm -hmm. if you want, want to put into perspective, last year, the lowest that I, the group, lowest 
uh, pay rate for graduate plumbers was 94,000. Holy 100, shit. 100 plus. So that's 61,000 US dollars. So that's, you know, 16 to 18 year olds pulling pulling that kind of money. Holy shit. And within two years, for they'll be up to 100. A graduate plumber. This is, yes. I am just outside high school. Just graduated, yes. So 16 to 18 year old. Yeah. Wow. Well, right now it's worth one dollar thirty per stocks. Can't get any lower than it is right now. Don't don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. It can always go lower. Mm. For a plumber or a pipe fitter. A bit plumber. Plumber. For sticky two plastic pipes together, yes. Mm. And apparently this is the the last the um last year's groups were some of the least competent and you know just most useless people that um they've ever seen oh yeah um i had a friend of mine who taught tafe so tafe is our our trade college colleges here uh and he he said that yes every year he was doing electrical every every single year they're less and less qualified but tafe is and on his back to have them graduate year after year after yeah. year, right? Um, so he has to lower the standards every single year, um, which is, yeah. yeah, yeah. They technically pass, but they are, <laughs> they are just the worst. Yeah they, they, yeah, they sort of know what they're doing, and they have licenses and insurance, so they probably won't break it. And if they do, they have insurance, so somebody else will come out and fix it, probably. Um, but yeah. yeah, this is what gets me about the door. Like, I have the tools to do it myself. I could spend a weekend not streaming. Uh, pass with A plus or a D? A D. D minus. Uh, plumbers, putting tubes together. You mean uh, other tubes than YouTube? Hey, hey, I've done more YouTubing than any plumber. Um, yeah, I could. I could do the door. Series of tubes. I could do the door so myself. You to, yeah. You need a plumber to connect the YouTube to the internet tube. Yeah, the, I, I paid an electrician. I paid an electrician to come out and do the cable. Twenty-five thousand, please. No thanks. <laughs> just, just, just shark bite that together. No thanks. No thanks. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Also, it feels like lunchtime. It is lunchtime. It is lunchtime. I'm about to go raid Emily. Uh, do the door yourself and use the money to save to. Yeah, I could take a weekend off from streaming, and I could go do the door. But I want somebody who does a better job than I will do. I will do a fine job, but because it's because it's the biggest noise leak in the room, right? I want it done to a higher standard that I know I can do, all right? So that's why I was gonna pay for a, an actual carpenter to come out and do it. The problem is I can't find one, okay? I, I rang up, I rang eight different people, three people are gonna come out and give, give me a quote, and it looks like the only one I'm gonna get somebody to come out is spray foam. No, I want the door to the door jams, the door to door jam, to be a tight seal spray foam is not an option uh so yeah i think the only way to do it is i call somebody out and just okay the price that they're not going to give me over the phone um solid door oh, oh dull most of the noise i have a solid door i have the door i just i need the door frame redone because the door frame was originally made for a a normal door thickness wall and my walls got doubled in thickness so they're now a foot thick raise his hands yeah yeah but <laughs> Kel, you're a little there's bit like far a, away. I think there's a little, a, 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 there's a, a sound dampening fitting you can. Uh, there is. Um, there is. It's like a rubber gasket. There is. Foam gasket there is. or something. You do not want to know the or price. Rushy gasket. You do not want to know the price. Not for the proper one. It also oh, seals yeah. from the door down to the floor. So when the door shuts, it actually hits a little lever and then puts another seal that like, goes from the door down to the ground and double seals the door, the, the, the floor and also puts a gasket all the way around that only happens when you, the last inch of the shut. Yeah, uh, that door frame is, uh, the door frame itself is four grand. Uh, Crunch Tech! Thank you for the eight months worth of subs. You're just in time for me to end the stream. Mm. Jay wants me quiet, not gonna uh, sit, uh, O2. Uh, well, that's the other thing. Um, yes, it would also, it also, further inhibits airflow. Um, uh, 
More answer is Dollar's new door and the flat I rent put in like five centimeter thick on each side because they made a big old hole to the frame. Oh my god. Okay. Uh prefer to hire one who's overweight, looks like he's in the market for 30 years experience, but has questionable hygiene. If I could see them beforehand, it's normally just a phone call. That's the best you get. That or driving past and happen to see a new housing estate go up, like somebody in physically building a house or, or renovating, and say, hey, guys, after work, do you want a late night job? Um, Because, you know, it's it's a soundproof room. They can come in here with a circular saw and make whatever noise they want. It's not going to affect anybody, Um, even with the door removed. So I need to bail. Uh, we're going to go raid Emily Flambe, who's playing Factorio. Um, and she's playing K2SE. Call Lumbia, ask they do installs. They don't. Uh, Sassy, my connection is glitchy. Cool, I'm bailing. Uh, I'm out. Thank you for joining me. It's been a blast. Uh, no more. I don't, I don't know actually, actually what's happening tomorrow's stream. I haven't got that far, but I need to bail. Uh, go say hi to Emily for me, as always, because I got a ad starting in three minutes. I do not want to hang around for the ad. Uh, nobody wants to hang around for the ad. Uh, so I will see everybody for the next stream tomorrow, which is, I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow's stream is. It could be more enshrouded. It could be Dyson Sphere. I also was meant to look at the Factorio Clustorio server, so I don't know. Um, where is IRL Mario when you need him? He's a plumber. Uh, I, I, I need a carpenter. Um, so hi, Sassy. Bye, Sassy. I'm getting off because I need videos to edit as well. I got four I need to do today. Uh, so yes, please tell Emily I said g'day, mate. I would appreciate it. Uh, she will appreciate the raid. And call Jesus. Ah, he's busy. He's busy. He's got other 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 plans. More DSP? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but I will see everybody in the next stream. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. 4 a.m. My time. You know what time it is. Your time. At least you should by now. Anyway, that's it. I'm out. Bye.